Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be installing an AM CD7 into the Mustang. Welcome back to Jaeger Racing. Today we're going to be looking at installing a CD7 into our 2015 Mustang. Some of you might say, why? Why put a digital dash in a newer car? Well, the simple answer is, I want to receive all the data that this car has to offer onto a data logger that I can then take out. Um, a major thing is it also provides the lap times and so on and so forth and I can put warnings on it which the dash doesn't really do those things for you. So things like oil temperature, pressure or whatever else I'm able to pull out of the car via their PIDs then I'll be able to go ahead and analyze with. So it's going to be a good tool as we go through and actually develop this car a little bit to get an idea about what we're actually doing to it when we do it. One of the major components that I'm going to be showing you today is how to get the CD7 integrated into the Mustang via the OBD2 port. So I'm going to show you how to do that and then eventually I'll get you on track with it to see what, you, what I think of it, the impressions. I've used a, obviously a CD7 in the Subaru, uh, CD5 in the Miata and I'm not going to lie, I've grown accustomed to it and I really enjoy it, especially the shift lights. So that's one of the, another reason that I really want it in the Mustang. So it's a really useful tool as we go and try to develop a car. So let's see how it turns out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up dash design. So I went through and I loaded just a couple of generic screens um, to throw against it. Um, overall, don't really have anything uh, really picked or designed or anything like that. Yeah, just some generic AEM uh, models that they have. Then what we're going to do is simply we're going to go into tools then we're going to go to scan vehicle obd2 so you might say okay well now it comes up and it has no displays to connect to yada 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 so in my case because my screen is connected to a cigarette lighter i need to turn the car on so that i can actually have power so now i'm going to turn power on with power on, the car is going to blink, it's going to do some things. Um, I did notice that the car doesn't necessarily like. It throws like advanced trash control service, it throws check engine, it does all sorts of things um, when you initially do this. I'm assuming it's because it has a foreign entity that is now attached to it. Then I'm going to plug in my USB, which I always should have had plugged in in the first place. Now I'm going to click scan. When I click scan, it says turn on the key and unplug the USB cable to begin the scan. So now I'm going to unplug the USB cable. In doing that, it's going to show you this screen. So you might know it's going to go through and it's going to be downloading the PIDs. I have it slated onto can number two. So it's downloading 43 PIDs. With those 43 PIDs now downloaded, it tells me to reconnect my USB. I reconnect my USB. Now, the dash is going to take that information and it's going to then send it to the software. So, just to kind of give you an idea, it's going to give me a fuel system status, engine load, coolant temp, um, engine speed, vehicle speed, timing, manifold pressure, oxygen sensors, EVAP systems, barrow sensors, uh, ECU battery voltage, throttle position, fuel type, interesting, um, all sorts of information that I can use for track analysis and just to keep tabs on the car. So we're going to click OK. It says do I want to replace anything um, we're going to replace all the items it has now been successfully completed so we're gonna click close so I just wanted to check if I want to enable a terminating resistor um, but it does say not to do it so that's a good thing that it actually tells you not to do it um, now I need to go through and configure the dash in accordance 
to everything that I have. So now I'm going to go back inside and set all this up. Okay, so after a quick little change of a couple of uh, parameters and a couple different things within the software itself, now we have this. So this is telling me that I have almost half tank of fuel. My throttle position is at 23, which as you can see there, Apparently, Ford has their throttle set at 23% when they said open. Um, it says it's really cold. Um, I don't really have too many things set up as a whole just yet. But you can see the throttle position changing. Also, my battery voltage is changing. Um, it tells me it's 1 o'clock, which it's not. Got to change that. Um, the GPS will eventually come online once it captures a signal, although we are in a garage, so sometimes that can uh, hinder the GPS's ability to, to gather data, and also I don't really have the actual GPS in a great location, <coughs> but So let's see what happens when we start it. So obviously you see here I'm an idiot and I didn't set this up, but that's set up. I set this up so vehicle speed, GPS speed, just so I can see if there's a difference. You can see here you have RPM there. This is where you got to try out different things. I thought this screen might be pretty cool um, during the day because it's very bright. Uh, now that I look at it, don't like it at all. This screen looks very polished, looks very nice. Obviously I need to go through and change these parameters here and these here, um, but it has, I like how it has my uh, fuel and my RPM. So, I like this screen the best, so I'll probably change this to the home screen. And you can kind of see, you can you can see the RPMs as they move up. You can th see throttle position, you can see coolant. So, all in all, pretty easy, pretty successful. Now all I gotta do is configure it more and more and more to my liking. So, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, if you want to put a CD7, CD5 into your car, that's pretty much as easy as it gets. Um, obviously you need to buy the CD7, CD5, a RAM mount or mount it somewhere in the car. You have to get the OBD2 adapter cable, which plugs right up to the CD7 based off of the adapters that you have to do. And then in my case, because this is a little bit of an older CD7, I have the GPS module and this, which as you can see now, GPS has now locked up, being a green light. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple as an overall, and now I have data acquisition that's gonna take all the 42 parameters that I have in the Mustang, and it's gonna ship them to this, and I'll be able to data log with it. Pretty cool situation. All right guys, have a good one.